the absolutely positively remodeling of the tissue, meaning the bone form will change. Uh, do you really need to be totally accepted? Um, you know, that, that's, that's a, uh, I, I'm glad you asked that question. And implants have really only been out for 10, 15, 20, well, 20 years they've been popular. And most of the specialists out there don't have any more training or knowledge, or they didn't have it in their program when they went to school. So everybody's really learned about this, you know, outside of their training. So, you know, your regular, it all depends who, who can do it is, is on, you know, what their training level is. So you ask questions, what's their success rate? I'm a regular dentist, but, you know, I have hundreds of hours in implant-specific surgery education. So, um, you know, I, I, I do mostly implant surgeries. I'm not a specialist, but, uh, you know, um, just because you're a specialist doesn't mean that you had any training in it. So a peri if you were a periodontist and you graduated from periodontal school 20 years ago, you had no implant-specific training. Ditto for oral surgery, ditto for prosthodontics. Now these programs now, for younger people, they do have this uh, implant is more integrated, but it's, you know, uh, into the programs before these people graduate. So a specialist doesn't necessarily know as much or more than a general dentist. Um, go ahead. Maintenance. maintenance, you must rinse out with, uh, if you have an implant, with uh, prescription mouthwash, chlorhexidine every day. That's what I do for my patients. You must keep it clean. And if you have implants, uh, as, uh, you know, fortunately they tend to be bulletproof in most people, but my patients are supposed to be on a three month, you know, checkup. Just make sure everything's good. And if you ever feel anything slightly off, go right in. That's it. You know, because it means a piece of food's caught or something's there, it's a little sore. You gotta take it care of before it gets, you know, more involved. Here we see a broken tooth. The remaining tooth root is removed with an elevator, and there is no replacement with an implant at this time. Whenever there are missing teeth, there will be bone shrinkage called bone atrophy. We must now graft the area if we want to place an implant in this location. We start with the flap retraction. This is followed by decortification of the bone. These little holes will allow blood to reach the area more easily and help with graft maturation. Two bone screws are placed. These screws hold the soft tissue away from the graft and act as a scaffold for the bone to form. The area is filled with the patient's own bone or a bone substitute. will soak the graft and begin the healing process. If deemed necessary, we can then cover the area with a resorbable membrane to further help with the healing. The flap is repositioned and sutured into place. The patient may wear a partial removable denture during the healing phase as a temporary tooth replacement option. The sutures will be removed or dissolved if self-dissolving sutures are placed. Underneath, the membrane will dissolve while maintaining the area and preventing ingrowth from the soft tissue or gums. The bone underneath will mature and become part of the ridge. At about five to seven months, the area is again exposed with a flap and the bone screws are removed. The access holes can be left or filled with bone particles. Now the bone can be prepared for implant fixture placement. In this situation, a single stage type of implant placement is demonstrated where the healing cap is placed at the same time as the implant. During this healing phase, the patient can still wear the removable partial denture. The area heals and the sutures will dissolve or be removed. With adequate time of approximately four to six months, we can then restore the implant. The healing cap is removed and a button
implant is attached to the implant to give it structure, followed by a crown that will replace the top of the tooth. The gums around this crown may not fit perfectly at first, but will mold to fit in time. We can place implants in an atrophied posterior maxilla with the addition of grafting. The lateral window technique involves raising a flap on the buccal side of the ridge and then creating an access window. The bone is very thin in this area and can be prepared without damaging the inner membrane with slow speed round drills. Once the window is created, the bone can be pushed into the sinus and the membrane lifted with special sinus lift instruments to create a new sinus floor. fold over itself as it is being lifted, creating a barrier as well as covering small perforations. In this situation, we still have enough bone left in the ridge to stabilize an implant, and so we can place the implants at the same time as the grafting procedure. The space created is then filled in with different bone substitutes selected by the dentist. This can be the patient's own bone or an owl graft. The window access can be covered with a membrane to aid in healing and the flap repositioned. With time, the grafted bone will turn into mature patient bone close to the original.